from the Casper Event Center and welcome to the 2000 Wyoming State High School Wrestling Championships. Good evening, I'm George Kay. With me, my colleague Frank Gambino and our resident expert tonight is former coach and Hall of Fame wrestling uh, aficionado, Jerry Quinlan. Jerry, you're covering the 4A map tonight. There's not a lot of suspense as far as the team championship is concerned there, is there? No, there isn't, George. Uh, Green River has pretty much run away with it, but from there on down, it's going to be really tight. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank K2 and all the sponsors from wrestling for doing this thing tonight. It's really great to have you. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're all looking forward to it. Frank Gambino will be focusing on the 2A map. And in Lust, who's the defending champion from a year ago, they have a 60-point lead going into tonight's matches. They have six guys in the finals. Uh, Lovell is running second. Lingle is running third. And they have five guys in the finals. The three Taper brothers, all from Lingle, all will be wrestling for championships tonight. I feel fortunate the fellas have let me cover the 3A mat, and I have a lot of suspense there. Powell goes into the championship round with a four-point lead over Worland. The defending champion, Douglas, is only 11 points back, and then Newcastle and Star Valley follow. So that 3A championship is very much in doubt. Now, we'll be crowning champions 14 weight divisions in three classes, 2A, 3A, and 4A. And we'll be back to meet the 103 pounders when we continue from the Casper Event Center. Attention, current and former coal industry workers. And Center and the state championship for the year 2000 in state high school wrestling. I'm George Kay with Frank Campino and Jerry Quinlan. I'll be following the 3A map. Right now we're going through the face-offs between uh, the various opponents in all three divisions in class 3A, 2A, and 1A. You can see there is a spectacle here at the event center. Tremendous turnout of fans, and we're expecting some great action, Frank. You know, a lot of these, uh, the especially 3A, has been very tough since the opening round, pretty much. But with 4A and 2A, the championship has been pretty much decided days ago. You know, Jerry in 4A, Green River uh, nationally ranked about uh, in the top 20 in the nation, and uh, they probably have wrestled as good as, uh, as advertised. I think that they could wrestle with about any high school team in the nation. They've run away, have about a 90-point lead in this tournament so far, but down below them, Casper, Natrona, and Gillette are really fighting it out for second and third place. The next two teams behind them don't have as much potential to score, so it looks like it, it's going to be those top three, maybe with a runaway Green River next, either Natrona or Gillette. <laughs> Frank, I think uh, we should explain to our viewers what we're going to try to do tonight because with three mats going on all at once, it's just impossible to try to select one mat and say we're going to cover this match and ignore the other two. So what we're going to do is split the screen, as you see. The Class 4A mat will be up in the upper left. The 2A mat in the lower left. The 3A mat will be in the upper right. And we'll try to uh, focus on all the action all the time i guess that's the only way to put it that's the only way and uh, we'll, what we'll be trying to do in the lower box in the uh, lower right hand corner is try to give you some updated team scores like right now we'll see in class 4a with green river leading that in 3a paul has a very slim lead over wool and this is going to be a great finish in 3a and over in 2a uh lusk has a lead over lovell with uh lingo for laramie running third and hewlett running fourth in the class uh, 3A, as you mentioned, Frank, it's it's a Donnybrook there with uh, Powell with a slim lead. Now, Powell has five wrestlers in the championship finals, as does Worland, so that's going to be close. Douglas has four championship wrestlers, so they could make some noise as well. Star Valley has three, Rollins one, Jackson one, Kemmerer two, Newcastle has two. Newcastle's in fourth place right now in the 4A team standings. To start on the 3A mat, I will say at 103 pounds, it'll be Ryan Peterson.
Wilson from Worland, and he will take on Dusty Grant from Torrington. That's in the 3A match in the upper right. How about the 2A match, Frank? We'll have Matt Steckling from Saratoga. He's just a freshman against Colby Green from Shoshone. He is just a sophomore. Uh, Jerry, who's up in 4A? Up on the 4A mat at 103 pounds, we have Bryce Lenart from uh, NCHS and Dylan Stone from Cheyenne Central. They have not met each other this year. Uh, Lenhart is just a junior, and he is undefeated this year, 32-0, so he should be the favorite going into this match. Now, in the middle, Matt, it's the 2A action, and that's underway, and we're just getting started in the 3A. Matt, you can see the Torrington wrestler. He is on your left. He is in a... A maroon singlet, I guess you would call him, and Dusty Peterson from Worland is in the basic black. Frank, what's happening at 2A? And over on 2A, Colby Green of Shoshone leads 2 no, It's actually 2-2 two, two now. Each uh, wrestler with a takedown. Uh, Steckling uh, had two pins on his way to the finals. He's 31-5. and five. And Colby Green, uh, a pin and uh, a major decision and a technical fall to get to this point. And looks like uh, Steckling in control right now. It's 2-2. Two, two. We got about 50 seconds to go in the first period. No score in the 3A championship match as the uh, two wrestlers, Peterson from Worland and Grant from Torrey, kind of being a little cautious, a little tentative at this point. Jerry in 4A, I know that Bryce Lenhart is unbeaten on the season. Yes, he is. He's one of, I think, only two wrestlers in the tournament that are. There's no score over here on this match yet. It's been mostly on the edge with Lenhart pushing, trying to get a takedown, but he's had no success yet. Just right then, um, Stone was in underneath, but couldn't get there either. There's just nothing much happening but fencing around out there trying to get something going. There's Lenhart in on a single leg, and it sounds like there's some action on the middle mat. And Matt Steckling, a freshman from Saratoga, has won the state championship with a first-round pin over Colby Green. What a way to start your high school career as a freshman. He wins the, and he wins state. That's tremendous. Over in the 3A, Matt, Ryan Peterson from Worland got the takedown, but then Grant from Torrington got the escape. So it's 2-1. to one. Peterson is leading Grant still in the first period of the 3A 103-pound championship. Over here on the 4A mat, there's still no score. Ten seconds left in the first period. Neither wrestler has been able to really make a serious attempt uh, to score a takedown. They've just been fencing in on the legs. Nothing happening yet here on the 4A mat. That's the end of the first period with the score 0-0. Zero, zero. On the 3A mat, you see that uh, Grant from Torrington is in the down position here, and Peterson from Worland is on top as they start the second period. Peterson leads it two to one. He has a record of 27 and five, and he has beaten Grant twice in, uh, they've beaten Grant, Grant twice during their two meetings this season. Okay, and then on the two-way mat right now, the man on your left in the brown signal is Ricky Gilmore from Rocky Mountain. He's a senior. Jason Wassenberger from Lusk, his opponent. Wassenberger was a state champion at 112 pounds last year. He'll be in the red singlet. Grant has just gotten an escape in the 3A mat, so he's all even now with Peterson. It's tied at 2-2, second period. On the 4A mat, they started the second period with Lenhart on the bottom from Natrona. Dylan Stone is riding him, trying to keep him on the mat. Stone this year has a record of 33-5, and five, and Lenhart has just scored an escape, sat out, and turned in on him for one point. So he has a one-point lead going in at the very beginning of the second period. Lenhart, or, uh, Stone's in on a takedown. Lenhart has a tough single and drives his head into the mat. I don't think he's going to score out of that. And they're off the edge of the mat. This is a big match in 3A, especially for Worland, since they're only four points behind Powell in the team standings. Should uh, Peterson been able, be able to win this one, he would get at least four points, and that would uh, move them into a tie with Powell. And now Peterson trying to get the... Uh, 
He made the shot there, but uh, was unable to get a hold of uh, Grant. Dustin Grant, 31 and three on the season. He is a sophomore, as is Ryan Peterson, and they're all even at 2-2, second period. On the two-way Matt Jason Wassenberger of Lusk leads 2-0 with an early takedown. He's a guy who finished first in every single meet he was in. He has a 38-2 record. He uh, studies pharmacy, had two pins on his way to the championship. Uh, Ricky Gilmore from Rocky Mountain took sixth at 112 pounds last year. His record is 17-8. and eight. This is the first meeting between these two wrestlers. Now over to 4A. On 4A, it's still 1-0 in favor of Lenhart. Stone is certainly holding his own out there in this match. Uh, nobody's been able to score big or even get much of anything done out against these two against each other. There's 27 seconds left in the second period. Over to you guys. On the 3A, Matt, a lot of quick action there as uh, Peterson shot. Looked like he was going to get the takedown, but uh, Dustin Grant fought him off and no points allowed, so in the third period now, it's 2-2. Wrestlers in the up position as they get going here early in period number three. Jason Wassenberger of Lust still leads this 112-pound 2A match, 2-0 uh, over Ricky Gilmore of Rocky Mountain. There's 30 seconds to go. Wassenberger has a uh, couple of problems with his headgear, and this uh, 3A match is uh, still very tight. A uh, 4A match is still very tight. Yes, it's still 1-0. Stone has been warned for stalling, for backing off from Lenhart, and it's the end of the second period, still 1-0, with Lenhart leading, and Stone will take the bottom position to start the third period. He has an opportunity to score an escape or reversal. Uh, Lenhart is going to have to do something with him on top. Some of these wrestlers very, very even in ability in this uh, state championship final. That's what's the case. And there is a takedown by Peterson from Worland. As he gets a takedown against Dustin Grant, that gives him a 4-2 lead with just 39 seconds to go in their championship match. But now Grant comes back, gets an escape, so it's 4-3. to three, And Grant, with 30 seconds to go, will try to get a takedown here to even this thing up or even to go ahead. But it behooves him to really get after it. And now Peterson gets a leg. He leads it 4-3. to three. In the 3A, 103-pound championship match. And over in 2A, Ricky Gilmore with an escape here. So he trails Jason Wassenberger of Lust 2-1. We have just started the second period. Now over at 3A, just a minute to go here in this match. 4A, Matt. It's still 1-0 with a minute 4 left in the third period. Lenard has not been able to turn Stone. And Stone has not been able to make a real strong move to get out from underneath. Lenard's working on him hard, but he can't get him turned. And it looks like it's going to come right down to the last 45 seconds here. We have a winner in the 3A 103-pound championship. Ryan Peterson from Worland has defeated Dustin Grant 4-3 for the 3A 103-pound title. So that gives uh, his team four points. Worland, they move into a flat tie for the lead against Powell. And over on 2A, we have 114 to go in the second period. Jason Wasserberger of Lust continuously. Ricky Gilmore, 2-1. to one. Remember, these two have not wrestled each other this entire year. Wasserberger pretty much has been in control, start to finish with the exception of one escape by Gilmore. Now over to 4A. 4A, Matt. It's still 1-0. 20 seconds left in the, in the match. You might notice, gentlemen, that uh, there are two officials on each mat tonight for the finals. There's a referee and an assistant. The referee makes most of the decision and consults with the assistant if need be. Back on the 3A mat now, we have the 112-pound match between Devin Simpson from Star Valley. And there's a win on the 4A match. It's Lenhart, the winner. Lenhart turned him right at the very end, got a three-point near fall with a bar arm and wins the state championship, has an undefeated season, goes 33-0, state champion at 103 from Natrona, Bryce Lenhart. On the two-way mat, Jason Wassenberger had a takedown and a three-point near fall here in the second period and now leads 7-1 over Ricky Gilmore from Rocky Mountain, both of these guys seniors.
On the 3A mat again, it's Star Valley against Worland. Devin Simpson from Star Valley and Ramon Hernandez from Worland. There's no score yet as they jockey for an edge in the first period. Hernandez is a sophomore and Simpson is a junior. Now, the Whirlin wrestler, Hernandez, if he is to win this, he would put his team up. They're flat tied now with Powell for the 3A championship. It's that close. And over in 2A, one of the reasons why Lusk is uh, leading this 2A race by leaps and bounds, starting by 60 points to start today, is guys like Wassenberger. There are six guys from Lusk in the finals. And now over on 4A, we're ready for our next match. We're starting 112 on the 4A mat. It's Renal Candelaria from Laramie, a senior at 112 pounds. He's 30 and 2 on the season. And Kyle Dye from Kelly Walsh High School in the green uniform, freshman at uh, 33 and 2. These two have met once before this year, and Dye won it. A note of interest here might be that Dye is one of two brothers wrestling in the tournament tonight. An older brother, 1998 state champion from Wyoming, is wrestling in the in the NCAA Division II tournament tonight for the champion, national championship at 135 pounds from Shadron. There's no score on the 3A championship map between Hernandez and Simpson. Hernandez from Worland, Simpson from Star Valley. They've wrestled three times in the past, and Hernandez had a has won two of those three meetings, so they're that close. And in two-way, Ricky Gilmore really needs to make some hay here. He trails 9-2 to two to Jason Wasserberger of Luska. Gilmore in the brown singlet is looking to do something here, but Wasserberger just holding his own, but he doesn't want to get in that little gray area of stalling. On a 4A, there's a blood timeout. Uh, Candelaria of Laramie had to, had to be stopped for a minute and they're going to go back in action right now still on their feet minute 13 left in the period no score yet Die has little bulldog going on top there couldn't get anything with it they're still sparring around out there oh Die takes him down but can't score Candelaria moved nicely right out of a upper body throw no score there yet Candelaria moves to the side and is trying a little Russian whizzer outside there but can't score out of that either we're getting started in the second period now. The 3A 112-pound championship. On top here is Simpson. There's no score in the match against Hernandez. Simpson leads it. Or Simpson is uh, on top, but there's no score. Jason Wassenberger of Lusk has repeated as state champion at 112 pounds. A 10-2 win over Ricky Gilmore of Rocky Mountain. So Lusk are well on their way to winning states. And an awesome performance by Jason Wasserberger, uh, a repeating as state champion in Class 2A, 112 pounds. Uh, on the 4A mat here, Candelaria well, we have score. a moment. Go ahead, George. Uh, Jerry, let me interrupt for just a moment. Uh, well, we have just an opportunity here. Let's uh, take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more wrestling on K2 Television. Him out, so that adds up to a near fall. And on the two-way mat, Seth Holmquist of Shoshone just with the reversal right here, so he leads Newly Lemons four to two. Uh, the place finisher at this at 112 pounds in the last two years for Holmquist, one of the better wrestlers uh, for, uh, in 119 pounds. In 3A, we're in the third period now. That's Devin Simpson on the bottom from Star Valley who's trying to get loose. He has a four-to-one lead over Ramon Hernandez from Worland. So Simpson has the lead. Hernandez doing everything he can to get some back points here, get him on his back, but Simpson is very tough. Hernandez has beaten him two out of three times, but right now Simpson has the lead, and we're in the final minute of the match. Okay, on 4A, uh, action has resumed. Die is on top, and they're off, almost off the edge of the mat. Let's see how the referee calls it. They're gonna stop it for blood again. It looked almost as if Candelaria had a Granby roll there, but I don't think the officials gave any points for it. I couldn't see because the scoreboard was in the way. Action is stopped again because of blood from Candelaria. 
We're just about to the end of the 112-pound 3A match, and Devin Simpson from Star Valley has a 5-1 to one lead now as he gets an escape, but now Hernandez gets a takedown, so it's a 5-3 to three score. Time running out in the match in the third period, and it is over. The winner is Devin Simpson from Star Valley. That gives his team four points. They move in. They're in fifth place in the standings, but they're just about uh, three points behind fourth place Newcastle. It's that close. There's Devin Simpson, the 3A champion from Star Valley at 112 pounds. Candelaria has reversed die now on the 4A mat, and the score has gone 6-4 in favor of die. Uh, there's seven seconds left in the second period. As the fans were watching the, the 4A mat there a second ago, it was rather amusing that Kelly Walls coaches all three former Natrona wrestlers standing on the sideline coaching the Kelly Walls young man. And that's the end of the second period with a 7-4 die lead. Boy, have I got an interesting match for you on the 3A mat. This is Kyle Kilgore from Rollins, a senior, seeking his fourth straight state championship. He's going against Coulter Brown, a senior from Jackson. So uh, you see Kil uh, Kilgore is in the black singlet. And Brown working very hard to try to get the initial takedown. There's no score yet. 112, 119 pounds, Class 3A. On 2A, Seth Holmquist of Shoshone puts another takedown on there, so he leads 6-3 over Newley Lemons, a sophomore out of Lusk. Candelaria is coming on strong on the 4A mat. It's now 7-6 in favor of Dye, but Candelaria turned him for a near fall, is working hard on top. There's a minute 21 left in the third period. Candelaria is going to have to turn him again in the last minute, and there's a warning call on Dye for stalling, so it's getting very tight over here on the 4A mat. Kyle Kilgore able to fight off a determined bid for a takedown by Coulter Brown. These guys have wrestled against each other only once, and uh, Kilgore came away with the win, but it wasn't easy. Kilgore is 32-1, uh, and one, and uh, Coulter Brown is 34-2, and two, so they have pretty good credentials to be where they're at tonight. Absolutely. On 2A, Holmquist of Shoshone leading 6-3. We're down to a minute 33 here in the third period of play. Holmquist holding on over Newly Lemons of Lust. This has been a very uh, close to the best kind of match. Over to 4A. 4A, we're down to the last 40 seconds here. Dye is trying to get out from underneath and score. He almost had a, a Gazzoni underneath, and it's real tight on the edge there. The referee is signaling no points so far. Candelaria is still on top. It's 7-6 with 25 seconds left, and all Dye has to do is hold on to the, to the bottom position, not get turned to win this match in the state championship. Uh-oh. Let's stay with that 4A. That's a dandy. Dye has... Referee hasn't signaled any points yet. They're almost in the neutral position. Dye almost had him on his back. Now he's on top. There's the reversal and the end of the match. That does it for Dye. The freshman prevails from Kelly Walsh over Candelaria of Laramie, the senior. And the final score, 9-6. 9-6. That's what a two, tremendous right? finish for uh, what a season for Kyle Dye. That's two ninth graders today that have won state championships. We have one and two A at Saratoga. Right now, Seth Holmquist of Shoshone with an 8-4 to four lead in the 119-pound match over Newly Lemons. We're down to uh, 16 seconds. Well, we have no score. We're in the second period now in the 3A mat between Kyle Kilgore and Coulter Brown. Neither wrestler able to get the initial takedown in the opening period. Uh, Kilgore is on top in the referee's position as we continue now in the second period. Frank? And our 119 pound match on class 2A goes to Seth Holmquist. An eight to four winner over Newly Lemons of Lusk. Holmquist with constant improvement in two years ago at 112 pounds, he finished fifth. Last year at 112 pounds, he finished third. This year, a state championship, eight to four only over Newly Lemons of Lusk. On 4A mat, we've begun the 119 pound match. We have Laramie wrestler Micah Shue 
uh, a junior, and Justin Gomez from Rock Springs, a junior from Rock, uh, from the coal town over in the corner of the state there. In the orange uniform, Rock Springs in the yellow and maroon from Laramie. They're off the edge of the mat, 30 seconds gone, no score in the first period. We have the score now in the 3A 119-pound championship match. It's Kyle Kilgore from Rollins is up 2-1. to one. He's trying to add to it against Coulter Brown, but Coulter Brown looks like he may get a reversal here. 2-1 to one the score, second period with just 20 seconds to go. Kilgore leading and holding on for dear life, trying to fight off Coulter Brown for the 119-pound championship. This is just like a three-ring circus. You stuff to watch everything, guys. I know. We, we get confused. We're starting at 125 pounds in the two-way mat. Rusty Taper, one of three Taper brothers from Lingle High School. He is in the white, white singlet, mostly white and a little bit of red against John Cisneros of Lusk. He's a junior. He's in the red singlet with a little bit of white. Uh -huh. So we'll just try to keep track of that. Uh, Cisneros was a state champion on, at 103 pounds last year. Taper third at 125 pounds last year. Over to 4A. On the 4A mat, Gomez from Rock Springs has dominated that. Uh, with 28 seconds left in the first period, he has pinned Shoe of Laramie. And there's the state champion, Justin Gomez, ends up with a 39-5 and five record this year and is a state champion as a junior. Well, we're all tied up now in the 3A mat. An escape by Coulter Brown. And uh, we're all tied at 2-2. Kyle Kilgore and Coulter Brown. Kilgore seeking his fourth straight state championship. He is one tough customer. I remember last year, he was down 7-0 after one period. And he came back and won his third straight state championship. So he's got his hands full, though, with Coulter Brown. No score yet on the two-way map between John Cisneros of Lusk. He is uh, in the left with the Tigers right on his leg over there against Rusty Taper from Lingo. Both guys just kind of feeling each other out. Cisneros beat Rusty Taper uh, two out of three times this year. They've started the 125-pound match on the 4A mat. It is Jacob Buchanan from Cheyenne East in the dark, dark blue singlet and the first Green River on, uh, wrestler on the mat tonight for the championship, Steve Harmon at 125 pounds. These young men are both juniors. <coughs> they have wrestled twice before this year and Harmon has won both matches. And it takes the immediate lead on a takedown 2-0 with 30 seconds gone in the first period. There's a blood timeout on Matt 4, or Matt uh, 4A. Coulter Brown has taken a 4-2 lead over Kilgore at 119 pounds with only 12 seconds to go now in the match. The Jackson wrestler Coulter Brown leading 4-2 over Kyle Kilgore. Kilgore is up now trying to get the escape, but he's down, and he's down on the mat. He will not win four straight state championships as Coulter Brown from Jackson has defeated Kyle Kilgore from Rollins, 4-2. to two. That's a major upset in Class 3 over in 2A. We've entered the second period of 125-pound match in 2A. John Cisneros of Lusk, he's uh, probably not in control now against Rusty Taper of Lingo, and no points yet. And over in uh, 2 uh, 4A, uh, an even match there. Buchanan has just reversed Harmon, so the score is now 2-2. Two to two. And uh, what an upset over there, George, that was. That amazed me. What a job that young man from Jackson did against Kilgore of... Uh, over in 3A uh, now, we've got a good one at 125 pounds. This is Tyson Shadow from Douglas. He's only lost one all year, 34-1, and one, going against Tyler Banta from Star Valley. He... Uh, is a solid wrestler, as are all those Star Valley Braves. Now, it's easy to, uh, there goes Shadow, and he's gonna get the opening takedown here, I think. Yes, he has it. And he's trying to get 
get his opponent in a pinning position here. He is not able to do that, but it's the initial takedown for Tyson Shadow of Douglas as he would love to get some points for his team. They're about 11 points out of first place. Less than one minute to go in the second period. 2A, 125 pounds. Rusty Taper from Lingo Fort Laramie, a sophomore, has a one to nothing lead over John Cisneros of Lusk. We're down to 43 seconds left to go in the second period. I don't know if this is any kind of an indicator, but Buchanan did get Green River turned on his back there. Harmon was there for quite a while, and Buchanan scored a, a three-point near fall. Harmon got a reversal. Uh, Buchanan had turned him with the bar arm and held him there for quite a while. There's six seconds left in the uh, first period, and uh, Buchanan leaves it five to four at this point. And if that's any indicator that uh, Green River is feeling a little bit too high right now, uh, they need to settle down so all these kids can win the individual state championships. Back to Class 3A, that is uh, the Star Valley wrestler Tyler, ba Tyler Banta on the bottom here, and Tyson Shadow on top. Tyson Shadow leads it 2 nothing in the first period here as he's trying very hard to get some kind of a pinning combination against the Star Valley wrestler. These guys are both juniors, and they're very solid. Banta, 30-3. and three. His dad is a Star Valley coach. And Tyson Shadow, another junior, 34-1. and one. His career, 102-14. and 14. Over on 2A, Rusty Taper still has a one to nothing lead over John Cisneros of Lust. This has been a very, very... Not, they're not going to risk anything here. They're not no. going to go do something they're not going to regret later. A taper is on top, so here's an opportunity for Cisneros with a possible escape to, to tie or a reversal to take the lead, but taper's really taken, uh, hasn't given Cisneros much room. On 4A, uh, there's no change in the score. It's still 5-4 to four in favor of Buchanan. Both of these young men have won 29 matches this year. Uh, Buchanan lost 10 and Harmon lost 6. But as I said earlier, in the split between them, Harmon has the advantage and has won two matches. There's five seconds left in the first period. Scores 5-4 to four with Harmon on top. Well, that's a battle. Over in 3A, Tyson Shadow got a couple of back points. So after one period, he has a lead of 4 to nothing over uh, Banta from Star Valley. And as we're, we've mentioned, uh, Douglas 11 points out of the lead. They need to pick up all the points they can. They're the defending 3A champions, but they trail Powell and Worland. Over on 2A, John Cisneros of Lusk had a reversal. Rusty Tabor of Lingo came back to a takedown. So now it's 4-2 to two in favor of Tabor of Lingo. 4A, they just started the second period with Harmon on top and Buchanan trying to work his way out from underneath. They're on the edge of the mat. Harmon on his feet and they go out of bounds. No change in score here. And over on 2A, this is becoming quite a match now. It is 4-4 between Cisneros and Taper. 14 seconds to go. A cradle here, it's a possible. Uh -oh. They can get three point near four points. Right here in the final seconds, Cisneros over Taper. They'll give him a three point near fall for Cisneros and he will win the state title. 7-4 over Rusty Taper. A three-point near fall, George, in the last seven seconds. Man, that's going down to the wire, isn't it? Over at 3A, Tyson Shadow is maintaining control. He's up 4-0 over Tyler Banta from Star Valley, but he wants more. He's trying to get uh, Banta turned onto his back. And on the 4A mat, there's no change again. It's 5-4, 30 seconds gone in the second period. They're spending a lot of time chasing each other out of bounds here with uh, Harmon on top trying to control Buchanan in the referees or in the uh, mat position. State Championship Wrestling, and we're happy to be able to bring it to you on K2 Television. It's our pleasure. It's our first opportunity to do this. We're very happy to have Jerry Quinlan, Quinlan alongside to kind of keep us straight, Frank. He's the yeah. expert, and uh, we really enjoy the opportunity, I know. 
Hey, this is a lot of fun, George. I just wish I could hear you a little better. <laughs> we'll talk louder. Over on the two-way match, we're at 130 pounds now. The second Wasserburger of the night for Lusk, Eric. He's a sophomore against the second taper for Lingo, JJ. He's a senior, so we're starting now two-way, 130 pounds. Wasserburger versus of Lusk, taper of Lingo. For a match. Uh, Buchanan has now taken a two-point lead with an escape with a minute 20 gone in the second period, and they go out of bounds, and he almost had a takedown there. So this is a, a much better match than I expected here. Buchanan really has come to wrestle tonight. He shoots in on a single, gets way deep on Harmon. Harmon countered it pretty well and even could score as a counter move. 30 seconds left in the second period here, and referee calls a stalemate and puts them back to their feet. We're in the third period, just early in the third period, in a 3A 125-pound championship match between Tyson Shadow. He's leading 4-0 over Tyler Banta. Shadow is in the down position as they start this period. And now a stalemate, and they'll come back to the center of the match with uh, 127 to go in the match. Eric Wasserberger of Lusk at 130 pounds in 2A with a takedown hero, J.J. Taper of Lingo, so he leads two to nothing. Wasserberger had a record of 30 and eight this year and beat Taper four out of five times this year. Harmon just scored a takedown on the 4A mat. Uh, they're off the edge, but uh, he scored it right on the edge and it's now scored six to six. They have some trouble with the headgear trying to get it straightened around and back on so that he's more comfortable with it. Uh, what a crowd here tonight, guys, huh? Oh, and this crowd, you bet. Tyler Banta has just gotten one point on a illegal hold. And uh, so now with uh, 115 to go in the match, he is down four to one to Tyson Shadow and Banta riding tough. He is on top here and Tyson Shadow trying to get up and uh, earn some more points for his team. Excuse me, George, over on 2A, Wassenberger now of Lusk has a four to nothing lead over Taper of Lingle. Uh, Wasser Taper is, you can see on his uh, back, they all the Taper brothers have Taper tattooed yes, to their back. Yes, they do. There's no question about uh, what family they're from and, and what a family of wrestlers they are. All three of them in championship match here and tonight. They, and they all finished in the top five last year. That's incredible. We're down to half a minute now in the 125 pound 3A match. And Tyson Shadow with a four to one lead, but he has been unable to get Banta on his back. 4A Matt, they're just about to start action again. There's 10 seconds left in the second period after problem with the headgear. And Buchanan stands and almost faces Harmon. Harmon takes him back to the mat. And there's going to be no change in the score as the period ends. 6-6 six, six going into the last period. We're down to only three seconds to go in the 125-pound match on the 3A mat. Tyson Shadow leads it by a 4-2 score. And we are just about out of time here. Let's see what, what happens. We'll stay with it till the end in, in Class 3A. There's a tie for the lead between Powell and Worland. Douglas 11 points behind. And now they will win this match by a 4-2 score. Tyson Shadow is a state champion, the junior, 4-2 over Tyla Banta, and that gives Douglas four points, and they move up to 175 and a half. That puts them, what, seven points behind Worland and Powell. Over on 4A, there's been a change in score. Um, Harmon started on the bottom to start the third period. He stood quickly and got an escape. It's now 7-6. They're in the middle of the mat with 124 left in the last period. Either one can win the match right here with the takedown. On 2A, let me correct myself here. Taper has the green uh, anklet, so actually he is leading this match over Eric Wassenberger. Taper from Lingo, Wassenberger from Lust. Four nothing now, 32 seconds to go in the second period. 2A, 130 pounds. We're going to move to 130 pounds in the Class 3A mat. Keith Batista from Kemmerer. He is a junior. He is on 
Well, he is in the plain black with the red singlet. He would be on the right of your screen as you watch this match on the 3A map. The opponent is Michael Schwab from Powell. Schwab is a senior, and he is in the solid black singlet with uh, an orange cat's paw, I guess is the best way to describe that. These fellas have met, uh, uh, let's see, they have, uh, Batista has uh, beaten him two out of three. Over on 4A, George, Harmon has taken a three-point lead now with 36 seconds left to go in the third period. They just went off the edge of the mat. Buchanan will start in the down position, and if Harmon can ride him out here, he's going to be the state champion at 125 from Green River uh, this year, the first one in the tournament. In 2A, J, uh, J.J. Taper of Lingle on top here in Class 2A, leading 4 nothing over Eric Wasserberger of Lust. Taper, a senior. Wasserberger, a sophomore. There wasn't much scoring in that second period, so now the Taper, see if he can hang on and make it a split for the Taper so far with one more to go. All right. Three brothers in the championship. That is something. Batista has the leg on Schwab, but he is having trouble bringing him to the mat. And now he does get him down, and there's the takedown, the first period takedown by Keith Batista from Kemmerer, 33 and one on the season. Wow, did he slam him down. And we have a pin on 4A. You can, no, no pin, George. You can just hear the Green River fans cheering their wow. first state champion of the year. He won it nothing. Six dominated that last period of wrestling. Came on very strong, and it's Steve Harmon, the champion from Green River at 125. Lots of Green River fans up there shoot, uh, supporting their team this evening. You could hear the big roar. Boy, they've had a lot to cheer about, haven't they? Yes, they are they a do. solid they wrestling not, team from they, top they to bottom. They could end up 100 points ahead before the night's over. Over on two-way, Eric Wasserberger of Lust being attended to by the coaches. I didn't exactly see what was wrong, but, but it uh, looked like a very tight hole, maybe around the neck or this, actually in the groin area. This might be a good time to take a break in the action yes. because uh, we're just getting started in a couple matches and we have the injury on the 2A mat, so let's take a brief time out here. You're watching the State Wrestling Championships on K2 Television. Attention, current and former coal industry workers. Did you know that you're entitled to file for benefits under the federal black... State Championship Wrestling on the 3A mat. We're all even at 2-2 between Batista and Michael Schwab. What's going on on the 4A mat, Jerry? 4A mat, we've uh, had a minute and 15 seconds gone in the first period of the 135, 130 pound match with Dennis Taylor of Campbell County High School in Gillette in the darkest uh, purple uniform. And in the green and white, we have Clayton Wright from Green River. Uh, Clayton's record this year is 30 and six. Taylor is at 39 and eight, and Taylor has won both meetings between these two wrestlers before this year. Over on two-way, Eric Wasserberger of Lusk, a sophomore, does not look well at all. He took a, he took a shot in the stomach area, and he's been uh, just getting to his feet now, and has been very wobbly. Uh, J.J. Taper of Lingle leads this match four to one with the 123 to go in the third period, and I don't think he'll be able to continue, but they are going to give the match to Wasserberger. So Wasserberger can barely get off the mat, and he's going to win the state championship. All right, if you, it must have been an illegal move that caused that, and in that case, if the wrestler can't continue, then uh, the, his whoever did the illegal thing loses the match. Well, Taper thinks he won. Well, he's a but good I, sport about it. He came over and uh, shook hands with the exactly officials. What happened? Did you well, see I, On the 3A mat now, we see that uh, Schwab, Michael Schwab from Powell, is kind of on top here. But Batista, Keith Batista from Kemmer, trying to work his way out from underneath. We're tied in this match at 2-2, second period with a minute and a half to go. What happened was, is Wasserberger was hit in the head and lost consciousness for a while. Oh. 
But he, did he get slammed or I, just punched? It, it, it looked to me like he was just slammed to the ground. Now, I saw the referee raise his hand as the as the winner. Yes. That's, so that, that, yes. That, so I know yeah. I saw that one right. W Wasserberger won. Yep. Yeah. We've really there got a battle in uh, Class 3A as far as the team championship is concerned. A flat-out tie between Worland and Powell, 182 and a half, and Douglas is only seven points back, 175 and a half. Newcastle isn't that far out of it, 168 and a half. Over at 135 pounds on 2A, Luke Collins in the red, white, and blue from KC, taking on Kyle Panet. Pantarolo from Lingle. Pantarolo 35 and 5 on the year. Collins 28 and 14. Over on the 4A mat at 130 pounds again, it's Green River in green and Campbell County in the dark purple uniform. No score with <clears throat> one minute gone in the second period. They've been on their feet the whole match so far. Nobody's been down on the mat. Keith Batista now has a 3-2 lead. He managed to get an escape in the second period against Michael Schwab. So Batista has a 3-2 lead. These two guys are really going after it, banging heads. And, and now Batista getting his headgear checked as Schwab waits for him at the center of the mat. Pontarolo of Lingle at 2A, 135 pounds with the takedown early over Luke Collins of KC. Collins a junior, Pontarello just a sophomore. He was a fifth place finisher at 135 pounds last year. No score here yet at 130 on the 4A mat. They're still both on their feet trying to get a takedown. 15 seconds left in the second period. It's going to be interesting to see who chooses to do what in the third period if there's no score here. Oh, there's a warning for Green River for stalling, backing up off the bat. So that puts him at somewhat of a disadvantage here. He's going to have to be more aggressive or lose a point for stalling. He shoots in immediately for a single leg and gets caught between the uh, Campbell County's legs. And time runs out to end the period. And now the referee has warned the other wrestler. So they both have a warning for stalling to start the third period. No score. And Green River takes down, so he does have, all he has to do is to get out now. Batista with a 3-2 lead over Schwab at 130 pounds in the Class 3A mat. 3-2 the score. We're just at the end of the second of the, uh, the stalling warning on Batista. Now let's see exactly where we are here. We're down to the last few seconds. As Batista fights him off here, Schwab trying to get a, and Batista wins it, three to two over Schwab, and what a hard fought match that was at 130 pounds. Batista, the winner from Kemmerer, by a three to two score over Powell's Michael Schwab. So Powell does not pick up any team points there. They remain tied with Worland for the lead. Let's go over to 4A real fast. Okay, over on 4A, there's been some action now. Harmon, or uh, excuse me, Wright started on the bottom, got an escape. They're back on their feet, and Taylor tried a front head roll to hold him on his back, but couldn't get anything. There's one minute left in the first period. This is very, very tight. Remember that Taylor won bo both matches between these two before. He's trying to move behind and score a takedown. Picks up on a knee, but he got, gets his leg caught. And Wright is driving. They're in, a, in almost a stalemate position with no score yet. Over on the two-way mat, Kyle Pontarello with a three-point near fall in the making, leading Luke Collins, who will be coming up 5 to nothing, and he's, almost, he's very, very close to sticking him here with 35 seconds to go in the second period. 4-8, it's still tight, I think. Oh, there it is. Two-point referee signals a reversal, but it should be a takedown. Now what's going on? Looks like that there is a reversal on Taylor's part. And a near fall, so that should make it 5-3 with no time. That's it. 5-3 right at the end of the match. Taylor came through and, and got a reversal and a near fall. 
If we can keep up here, George, oh. in two weigh 135 pounds, Kyle Pontarello of Lingo did pin Luke Collins of KC. So Lingo picks up some points, even though they do trail Lusk in the two way team title by quite a distance. But uh, Ling but Lingo, a winner in 135 pounds, Pontarello with the pin. Okay, Dennis Taylor, 135 or 130 pound champion from Gillette, uh, beats uh, Wright of Green River 5-3 right at the end of the match. Over in the 3A, 135 pound match, Dustin Piscotti from Newcastle against Justin Carter from Powell. And Piscotti got the opening takedown, so he has a 2-0 lead as they have a little break in the action there Well, they tend to, uh, to Piscotti. Over on two-way, we are now at 140 pounds. In the black singlet is Kirby Goodvin from Hewlett. He was a state champion at 103 pounds two years ago, and he's taking on Curtis Venjohn of Lusk, a junior who placed fourth at 140 last year and fifth uh, two years ago. On the 4A mat, we have another matchup between Green River and Campbell County. From Campbell County, it's Jason Weed at 135 pounds. He's 36 and 10 on the year. He's res wrestling Ricky Gardea from Green River at 135. Gardea is a senior. Weed is a junior. Uh, Gardea has a record of 28 and 11 on the year and lost the only match between these two before this year. Might mention also that Jason's dad is here tonight watching the mat. He's not feeling well. We wish him the best of luck. We also want to make a clarification on two way at 130 pounds. Eric Wassenberger was declared the winner over J.J. Taper of Lingo on a disqualification by Taper. Wassenberger will be examined for a possible concussion. Mm. Yeah, boy, that uh, that was quite a match, and uh, Wasserberger gets the win, although he wasn't able to continue. Well, again, the ruling on that is if if the one. A wrestler intentionally causes the injury by doing something illegal. He is going to lose the match. Mm -hmm. Matt, so, George, what's up on three? Well, on three A, Dustin Piscotti is still uh, leading at 135 pounds. He's leading Justin Carter of Powell. He got the initial takedown, so Piscotti has the two to zero lead. These two guys are—they've uh, never met before, so they're strangers to each other as far as that's concerned. Piscotti is 34 and 3. He is a sophomore. Justin Carter is a senior and he is 27 and 3 on the year. At 140 pounds, uh, Kirby Goodwin from Hewlett, uh, probably one of the best wrestlers in this classification regardless of weight. He is 32 and 0 and pinned his way into the championship round. Curtis Benjon uh, had a pin, a uh, major decision and a technical fall on his way to the championship of uh, Benjon from Lusk. Over on the 4A mat at 135 pounds, uh, Weed in the dark purple uniform just ducked under Gardea of Green River for a two-point takedown right at the end of the first period, and so Weed leads it 2-0. Referee has flipped the coin, and Weed is going to take the down position to start the second period. Perhaps uh, our viewers read today's Casper Star Tribune front, front page story on uh, Pat Weed, the former Gillette coach who is now battling cancer. And he was uh, here to watch this match. I don't see him at this point, but now uh, there he is. He's seated uh, watching his son Jason wrestle for a state championship. It was a great story, I thought, by uh, Ron Goldberg. And right now on 2A, it's Curtis Venjohn leading 1-0 over Kirby Goodwin of Hewlett, a junior from Lusk, a senior from Hewlett. We've got 119 to go in the second period. Gardea is now on top of Weed uh, in the second period, hasn't been able to turn him or come close to it yet. Weed is trying to back out from underneath, go out the back door and score a reversal. Still 2-0 at 135 with Gardea in the green uniform and Weed in the purple uniform. Dustin Sp uh, Piscotti from Newcastle with the lead over uh, Justin Carter from Powell. And remember, Newcastle isn't out of it really either. They have, uh, they're in fourth place with 168 and a half points. And so they are ahead of Star Valley by a couple of points, Star Valley in fifth. 
Leading the uh, chase in Class 3A is Powell and Worland. They're in a flat tie, 182 and a half. Douglas is seven points back at 175 and a half. So all of these matches are crucial when they involve uh, one of the top teams, Powell, Worland, Douglas, Newcastle, or Star Valley. We're heading down the stretch of the 2A 140-pound match. Ben John of Lusk leading Goodman of Hewlett, one to nothing. Okay, over on 4A, Weed has just scored another point by an escape and is about to take Gardea down. Didn't quite get there. He's working for a takedown on top. Got 13 seconds left in the second period <coughs> with Weed ahead 3-0. Starting the third period in class 2A, 140 pounds. Very, another very close to the best kind of match. With Ben John of Lusk, he will be in the all red singlet against Goodman of Hewlett, a senior. Remember, uh, he started his career in 97 with the championship at 103 pounds. Now he's up to 140. Well, he's eating good. Yeah, that's good he, to know. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Quinlan always insisted on that yes, when he, he was did. coaching yeah, the Yeah, we Mustang. always fed everybody real well, especially Ron Estes. Yes, and cutting weight wasn't a problem either, was it? Never, never, not, <laughs> not in this sport. If you notice through those likes and dislikes, I think the majority of dislikes, number one, was cutting weight. And the next one was that the wrestlers didn't like basketball. Right. <laughs> but they all like girls. Oh, yeah. I noticed that. Yes. <laughs> all the information sheets. And we certainly want to thank Jerry and, and you, Frank, for uh, working with the youngsters after the uh, semifinals last night to bring us up to date. We're in the final period now of the 3A 135-pound championship match. Dustin Piscotti from Newcastle has the lead. He is in the down position here as he tries to uh, get out from under against Justin Carter from Powell. Over in 2A, it's a 1-1 tie now. Goodman of Hewlett in the black singlet. Ben John of Lusk in the red singlet. 1-1 with one minute to go, and this is pretty much the way it's been on 2A. Very, very close most of the night. On the 4A mat, we've got a minute and a half left in the match. And Gardea is on the bottom from Green River. Weed on top. Weed has the lead, 3-0. And is controlling Gardea fairly well right now. But looks like Gardea may get out with the stand-up. Weed takes, comes down on a leg and is going to hold on just a little bit. A minute 15 left on the pair. And Weed is worn for stalling. 30 seconds to go in 2A. 1-1. Goodman in the black from Hewlett. Ben John of Lusk in the red. Lusk uh, has six guys in the finals tonight. It's no wonder that they're leading this team race by just about a ton. But 16 seconds to go. We may be headed for our first overtime match of the night. We've got some scoring now in the 3A match. Dustin Piscotti has a 4-3 lead over Justin Carter from Powell. And it is a, a real battle. They're in the third period. And they are... Uh, in the final minute. Okay, we're going to overtime in class 2A. They'll go two minutes in the final period. It is a sudden death. Sudden first, death, first, whoever scores. Whoever scores first uh, wins the state championship. He can't beat that for a finish. I guess. Good the finish. Hewlett on. in the black. Ben John of Lusk, a junior, in the red. Okay, over on the 4A mat, 135. 40 seconds left. Weed on top, leading 3-0. Ben John possibly with the takedown for two, possibly. Oh, and Goodman got back to his feet. That, that was close. pretty well there, Frank. That was close. Ben John looking for that double leg takedown. He's going to try it again here. And Goodman fighting him off. On the three aim at Dustin Piscotti has defeated Justin Carter from Powell, 135-pound champion from Newcastle. Dustin Piscotti, a sophomore. And that gives uh, four points to Newcastle. They move up to 172 and a half points. Uh, points. They are in fourth place. Okay, over on 4A, there's 18 seconds left in the match. Gardea has just scored an escape, so it goes 3-1. 
Just a few seconds left. He shoots in on Weed. Doesn't look like he's going to score at this point. Shoots again. Has no success. And Weed's going to hold him off. Oh, he loses. Weed lost a point for stalling, but it's going to make no difference. It ends up 3-2, and I'm sure Pat Weed has a smile on his face tonight. In Good luck to Jason and Pat. Tough loss for Gardea of Green River. In 2A, we are still in overtime with 19 seconds to go. Kirby Goodwin in the black. One, Curtis Venjohn of Lusk, one. Goodwin has withstood two tremendous attacks by Venjohn for a takedown. It's just amazing that he, he was not taken down for two points, but he's still there. So we have 19 seconds to go in overtime. Remember, sudden death, first person to score will win the state championship. And there they go. I tell you, this is really pressure. And they're rolling around on the map. He got it right there. Ben John with a two-point takedown, and he'll win state 3-1 to one over Kirby Goodman of Euler. That was a tremendous match on two-way, 140 pounds. On 3A, we're at 140 pounds now. First period, Manny Ramirez from Worland. He is in the solid black singlet. The black and orange singlet is on Jared Ferrella from Newcastle, and they are scoreless after about one minute of the first period at 140 pounds. Okay, over on 4A, we have Danny Carroll of Rock Springs in the orange and black, and we have Jake Arnold from Sheridan at 140 pounds. Arnold is 33 and four on the year and a past state champion. Uh, Danny Carroll is 30 and five on the year, a senior, and has uh, gotten the first takedown and, and, or excuse me, Arnold got the first takedown and leads it 2-0. Over on 2A, we had a tremendous finish to our last match, but now we're starting our next one at 145 pounds. Chauncey Williams in the green of Moorcroft, a senior against John Taper of Lingle. That's the third Lingle, the third Taper from Lingle we've seen tonight. And the Tapers are all for two so far. This particular Taper has a handicap of having just one hand, but apparently it hasn't uh, stopped him from being a very successful wrestler. Moorcroft, uh, Chauncey Williams with a two point takedown already leads to nothing. Okay, over in 4A, it's still 2-0 with Arnold in the lead. He turns Carroll to his back with the cradle. Don't know if he's going to score. He did, couldn't hold him there, couldn't get any points out of that cradle, and it looks as if uh, Carroll may come up on top. Oh! Carroll does a head and arm right to... Uh, Arnold's back, but doesn't score out of it yet. It's still 2-0, but Carroll is going to come up with some points out of this. Still no score on the uh, 3A 140-pound match between Manny Ramirez from Worland and Jared Ferella from Newcastle. They're taking a little bit of a break there. I think we might have an opportunity here to take a commercial break. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Let's take just a couple of seconds away from the action at the Casper Event Center. You're watching the state championship matches on K2 Television. When we wrestling championships, we have no score in the 140-pound 3A match between... Manny Ramirez and Jared Ferella. What's going on at 4A? Over here on the 4A mat at 140 pounds, Jake Arnold from Sheridan in the blue uniform has pretty much controlled it through the first three minutes of the match. He's ahead five to one. Almost had uh, Carroll turned in a basket just a few minutes ago. Couldn't quite get him over. He's riding on top now with one minute left in the second period. In 2A, Chauncey Williams of Moorcroft in green leads John Taper of Lingo 2-0 just starting now the second period. Williams knows what he's doing. He was the state champion last year at 140 pounds, placed sixth at 140 two years ago. He placed third at 112 pounds three years ago as a 31-4 and four record. Ferella has gotten an escape at 140 pounds in the uh, 3A match. And so he leads 1-0 over Ramirez. They're in the second period, about a minute in. Nice round of applause just a moment ago on the 4A mat for 
Pat Reed as he uh, was taken, he's watched the match, his son won in a wheelchair and then uh, was taken out of the arena and really received a warm uh, round of applause. Down on 4A here, underneath uh, Carroll of Rock Springs was trying to Granby roll right at the end of the second period there. Couldn't quite get it. The score has not changed. It's 5-1, to one, and Arnold will be on the bottom to start the third period, working on his second state championship. Over on 2A, Chauncey Williams and Warcroft holding on to a 2-0 lead. We're down to 1-10 to go in the second period. He is in the green singlet trying to get something done here against John Taper. And everything in this match has been very, very difficult and very well earned. We're moving toward the end of the second period in the 140-pound 3A match. And Jared Farella from Newcastle, who is a rodeo uh, competitor, and he loves that, is leading Ramirez by a score of 3-0. Now should Newcastle hang on and win this, they would move ahead of Douglas in the team standings. Uh, they have 172 and a half, Douglas has 175 and a half. So that's how close this 3A race is. Worland and Powell are tied for the lead as we go with the 140 pound match. Over on 4A, uh, one minute left in the match. Arnold was on the bottom, came out through the back door and turned Carroll over to his back and now has a 10 to one lead, pretty commanding with just 50 seconds left. There goes Carroll over again in another cradle. Arnold's gonna score some more points. On the two-way match, Chauncey Williams picked up a takedown and a three-point near fall over John Taper of Lingo. The Moorcroft senior now leads seven to nothing. We're down to the last couple of seconds in period number two. We're in the third period at the 3A 140-pound match, and it's Ferrella leading 3-0 over Ramirez from Worland. And the match is just about over on 4A. It's now 15-1, 15-2, and Carroll takes him right back down, makes it 17, which is a technical fall. And so... Arnold wins it by 17 to 2, 15 points more than his opponent, and gets a technical fall at 140 pounds to win his second state championship over Danny Carroll of Rock Springs. On 2A, John Taper of Lingle has gotten on the board with a takedown, then let up Chauncey Williams and Warcroft for a reverse, so it's 8-2 Williams over Taper. We have now begun the third period, uh, 90 seconds to go in the match, with Williams leading Taper. We're down to the final minute in the 3A 140-pound match between Jared Farella from Newcastle and Manny Ramirez from Worland, and Farella continues to lead it 3-0 as Newcastle, if they can win this, would move into third place in this team standings as the 3A title is up for grabs, Frank. Well, the uh, crowd here is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had 6,600 people here for the, the semifinal round yesterday. That's amazing. And, uh, you know, it wasn't the, the best night in the world for travel. Over on 4A, we have two coaches' sons out there. Mick Novotny from NCHS in the orange and black uniform, 145 pounds. Zach Ferguson from Campbell County in Gillette at 145. Zach's a senior, Mick's a junior. They have not wrestled before this year. Mick has a record of 21 and 15 and is somewhat of a underdog coming in through the uh, tournament to get into the championship. Ferguson is 18 and two on the season. Very impressive record. John Taylor. Botany has a leg up, gets him down on the mat. No takedown scored yet. Ferguson steps over and looks like he's going to come up with two. In 3A, we're coming to the end of the 140-pound match, and Jared Ferrello from Newcastle has defeated Manny Ramirez from Worland by a 5-1 to one score, and those four points for the team victory would move Newcastle into third place. That would give them 176 and a half points. They move a point ahead of Douglas, 175 and a half. Over on 2A, John Taper of Hewlett, uh, excuse me, of Lingle, 
trailing a 12 to 6 to Chauncey Williams and Moorcroft. We have 16 seconds to go. If Williams hangs on here, he will repeat as state champion. Last year, state champion at 140 pounds. This year, possibly at 145. He's in the green. Five seconds to go. So, an impressive performance here by Chauncey Williams of Moorcroft High School, winning the state championship 12 to 7 over John Taper of Lingo. Over on 4A, uh, Zach Ferguson did get a takedown there in the first period. There's about 30 seconds left, and there's a brief timeout. Novotny will be on the bottom to start uh, the rest of the second or first period with Ferguson on top. Novotny tie, tries a quick stand-up, doesn't make it, and they're back down on the mat. We're at the 145 pound level in class 3A and Steve Walker from Kemmerer has just gotten the opening takedown against Everett Siebert from Powell. Walker with the two point lead as he gets the takedown and he is on top here. He's in the black singlet with the red stripe and uh, the Powell wrestler Everett Siebert is in basic black really with that cat's paw on his uh, well, his rear end is what it is. <laughs> well, let's put it the way it is then. Yeah. On two-way, we move to the 152-pound match in the blue singlet, Jim McNeese from Southeast. He is a senior against Bobby Singleton from Hewlett in the black singlet. Singleton, 29-6 and six on the year, was a fifth-place finisher at 140 pounds last year. McNeese finished second at 145 a year ago. Over on the 4A mat, uh, Novotny has now scored an escape, and it's 2-1. Uh, to one. <laughs> And he sneaks in for a fireman's, almost gets it, uh, but no score there. Uh, this is r rather interesting here. There's Fer or, uh, Ferguson back on top for another takedown and runs the score. I don't think it's right on the scoreboard there, but I couldn't see the match for a minute. Anyway, this looks like if Ferguson wins this one, they're, they're going to, uh, Gillette will clinch second place in the tournament over Natrona because Natrona only has one more wrestler, and this will put, according to my score anyway, Gillette up by eight points. On the 3A mat, 145 pounds, the man on top there is Steve Walker from Kemmerer. He has a two-point lead. He got the first period takedown. Now he's trying desperately to get Everett Siebert onto his back. Siebert fighting him off. We're at, uh, nearing the end of the first period. And it's 2-0 uh, for the camera wrestler, Steve Walker, 27-3 on the year. He is a senior, as is Siebert. Siebert is 26-8 on the season. Right now, Jim McNeese of Southeast, he is in the silver and blue singlet at 152 pounds in 2A, leading Bobby Singleton of Hewlett, 2-1 uh, to one here with 27 seconds to go in the first period. Hewlett has uh, had a pretty strong team here in 2A. Uh, they're going to finish in the top five. Over on 4A, Novotny now has scored an escape halfway through the match, and it's 4-1. to one. They're back on their feet, and uh, we've got 42 seconds left in this period, and there's Ferguson in for another takedown and takes a commanding lead, 6-1. to one. 145 pounds, 3A mat, it's the orange mat, and Walker from Kemmerer leads it early in the second period. He's down, though, trying to uh, work his way out against Everett Siebert from Powell, and he is able to get the escape, so he has three points now. 3 nothing. Walker leading Siebert, and Walker with the uh, black singlet and the red piping down the side, the red stripe in the lead by three points. Over on two-way, McNeese of Southeast has added an escape uh, to his point total, leading three to one now at the end of one period against Bobby Singleton from Hewlett. On 4A, they're just going to start the last period, the third period. One thing I failed to mention about Ferguson, he is a returning state champion. And he has the lead over Novotny right now, six to one. 
Well, we have just a moment. I want to say something. Step into a world where fairy tales are real. The Tenth Kingdom, an all-star cast featuring a wealth of Emmy, Oscar, and Golden Globe winners. Only on K2 Television, Wyoming's news leader. It starts tomorrow night at 8. I thought fairy tales are real with our poker game. <laughs> Back over on 4A here. Uh, Ferguson has scored another takedown against Novotny. There's a minute 20 left in the last period and has a dominating lead. This could help them even more in the team score. If he can score one uh, more takedown, they would uh, win a major decision and pretty well ice second place for them. On 2A, McNeese of Southeast, he is in the blue singlet, continuing to lead Bobby Singleton of Hewlett. 3-1 now, we're down to the last one minute and nine seconds in period two. That's a 2A match, 152 pounds. You know, we're missing one man here tonight, and that's the late John Miller. John uh, uh, who was very close to you. I know Jerry is a, as a wrestling coach at Natrona, and he passed away suddenly uh, earlier, and we'd certainly love to have him with us because he he was a terrific guy i miss him greatly george as do all of the fans and wrestlers in the state he was one of my wrestlers in high school then was an assistant coach for me and then i worked for him as an assistant for a number of years john was a fine man that everybody liked and uh, we wish he were here tonight. The NC kids dedicated their season to him this year, and they've done a tremendous job coming from 10th place in the state last year to it looks like about third this year. They certainly have. Another uh, coach that we're missing is Ron Thon from Riverton. He was the coach of the Wolverines, and, and uh, we lost him too. Yep, Ron and John were in high school at the same time. Ron was down at Lusk at that time while John was wrestling at NC. Ron did a great job around the coach uh, around the state both coaching and refereeing and he was such a fine person uh, for the community of Riverton I'm sure he's very greatly missed there we're starting the third period now in the 3A mat and it's still Steve Walker from Kemmerer with a three-point lead over Everett Siebert from Powell and all on 4A the 145 pound match is over uh, Ferguson dominated at 9 to 1 and return, repeats as the state champion. Uh, Mick Novotny lost it. Uh, a junior, he'll be back next year. And that pretty well, I think, ices second place for Gillette High School or Campbell County High School in Gillette this year. 2A, 152 pounds, a scoreless second period between Jim McNeese in the blue against Bobby Singleton of Hewlett. So McNeese leads this match 3 1. We have just now started the third period. We're starting the third period in the 145-pound 3A match as well. Walker with the 3-0 lead over Siebert of Powell. And Walker is on top here, trying to uh, get his opponent on his back. We're in the final minute with about a minute and a half to go. In the final period, I should say. We're at 152 on the 4A mat. Peter Vanderheiden from Lander or from Laramie, excuse me, with the record of 26 and 8 on the year, and Lauren Hutchins of Sheridan, uh, senior, with a record of 30 and 6 on the year. And Vanderheiden is in on a double and takes him down to his back, scores a two-point takedown, and I think a two-point near fall. I couldn't see what the referee signaled there. I'll have to check and see what they put up. Nope, just two on the takedown is all that he signaled. On the two-way mat, uh, Bobby Singleton was on top in that position and let Jim McNeese get up for an escape. There was not much he can do trailing by two in the top position. He would need a three-point near fall at least to tie. So he thinks his chances are better here. So now he trails 4-1 with 105 to go in the 152-pound two-way ch championship match. Jerry mentioned uh, Peter Vanderheiden, and uh, he is leading in his match on the 4A mat, but we want to say thanks to his dad, uh, Pete Vanderheiden, who does so much on the internet for wrestling in this state. i tell you what, he is a, a great big help to the sport of wrestling, not only in Laramie, but at all high schools in the state of Wyoming. I think that's been a great thing for wrestling this year. It really has kept people informed, and... Uh, uh, Ron Tolan from uh, Kelly Walsh, or his son wrestles for Kelly Walsh, really helped out on the other side of the state with that also. 
They've done a great job. Jim McNeese with the takedown here in this two-way 152-pound match. He now leads 6-1 to one over Bobby Singleton of Hewlett. We have 24 seconds to go, so, you know, it's what you do in the last 30 seconds, last 45 seconds that can win you a championship, and a move like that uh, gives McNeese uh, one step closer to a belt. They don't get belts. They, they no, ought to. No belts. They <laughs> should. Yeah, I think so. Uh, on the 3A match, we're down to the final second. Steve Walker of Kemmerer has the lead, and he is in the command here against uh, Everett Siebert of Powell. And we're just seconds left in this one, and it's over. The state champion is Steve Walker from Kemmerer, 145 pounds in Class 3A. And the state champion at 2A, Jim McNeese from Southeast. He really improved. He moved up a weight class from 145 to 152. He was second at 145 last year. The winner at 152 from Southeast High School over Bobby Singleton of Hewlett. Okay, over on 4A at 152, it's Hutchins and Vanderheiden. Still 2-1 to one in favor of Vanderheiden with 15 seconds left in the first period. Hutchins is pushing for a takedown, picks up on the outside of the knee, slides around, and comes up with a two-point takedown, takes the lead right at the end of the period, 3-2. On the 3A mat, this is a, a key match if Douglas hopes to get back in it. At 152 pounds, Bo Burnham from Douglas against Nick Fulton from Powell. 152 pound match. These two have met twice before and Bo Burnham has won both times. On 2A, we're at 160 pounds. Guy Grant in the blue signal. He is from Lovell. He is a junior against Bill Stutzer from Grable. He is a senior. Stutzer was a champion in 152 pounds last year. Guy Grant did not even wrestle at all last year due to an injury, but was third at 135 pounds two years ago. Over here on 4A, uh, we've started the second period, and Vander Heiden is down. Trying to get to his feet and score an escape. Taken down pretty, pretty well there by Hutchins back to the mat. Hutchins has the lead at the present time. Three to two, and it looks as if he is bar arming Vander Heiden over for some near fall points. The referee is counting them off, and it's going to be three more points, if not something else, for Hutchins. Vander Heiden in trouble there. Yes, he's in a bad spot there, isn't he? Still on his back. And also on the two-way mat, Bill Stutzer of Grable has got Guy Grant of Lovell in a bad spot. Hutchins scores a fall on the 4A mat in the state championship with a minute and three seconds left in the second period. And Lauren Hutchins from Sheridan is the champion at 152. Boy, Lanny Schneider is uh, refereeing this 2A match, and he is right down there. Stutzer in absolute control over Guy Grant. This will be a three-point near fall at least. He's got two seconds to go in the period. One, did he? No, three-point near fall. So it'll be Stutzer leading after one period, three to nothing. And boy, he was within about four seconds of winning that whole thing there. You see on the 3A, Matt, Bo Burnham being uh, administered to his uh, apparently uh, maybe a cut lip there. There's no score against Nick Fulton from Powell, although for a moment there it looked as if Fulton would be able to get the initial takedown. Over on 4A, I think something interesting just happened there. According to my score, I'm keeping on the side. Uh, Sheridan has now scored 11 and a half points in this round, which puts them in third place tie. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Natrona scored four also, but it puts them very close to Natrona and moves them up ahead of Evanston uh, in the play standing. We're starting on the 4A mat at 160, and it's Paul Tafoya of Cheyenne Central, Justin Salas of Green River. Salas has beaten Tafoya twice this year, is a past state champion, is 36 and 4 this year, and Tafoya is 28 and 6 this year. So it's going to be a tough match here. Tafoya is in on a single leg, trying to take Salas back to the middle of the mat. Uh, with 30 seconds gone, 
in the first period and gets a two-point takedown by Tafoya there. On the edge of the mat, they're off. On the 3A match, uh, Bo Burnham from Douglas has just gotten the takedown against Nick Fulton from Powell. So Burnham has a 2-0 lead as they start uh, period number two. Uh, that's Burnham in the red, white, and blue singlet. He is on the bottom here as they start period number two against Fulton from Powell. Fulton is in the black singlet. He's on top. 2A, 160 pounds. Bill Stutzer from Grable picked up not one, but two three-point near falls. And he leads Guy Grant of Lubble, six to nothing. We've got 116 to go in the second period. Uh, Stutzer is in the blue and the yellow. Uh, Grant is in the blue and the white. All right. And 4A over here, uh, I didn't clarify before, Tafoya from Central's in the red uniform, and Salas from Green River in the green. In the green. And Salas, again, has beaten Tafoya both times this year, but is pre behind, or was behind there, 2-1. to one. He's now ahead 3-2 to two with a nice arm drag takedown. Bo Burnham has uh, gotten a reversal against Fulton and now leads 4-0 over the wrestler from Powell. Now, the interesting thing, I think, is in the 3A team chase because as, as we stand right now, Powell and Worland are all tied, 182 and a half. Douglas is seven points behind at 175 and a half. Actually, Newcastle is just uh, four points no, make that six points behind, 176 and a half. But should Burnham win this match, and he's leading by 4-0, that would close it to a three-point differential between first and second and third. Wow. And over on the two-way mat, Bill Stutzer, Stutzer of Green, uh, Grable, a little bit of an injured shoulder there on this last uh, exchange here, and he is leading this match 7 to nothing over Guy Grant of Lovell. Looks like uh, everybody's looking him over, and we'll see if he will be able to continue, and uh, yes, he will. Well, that's on good news. What's happening at 4A, Jer? 4A is still 3-2 in favor of Salas of Green River. 20 seconds left in the first period. Uh, and Tafoya is down, trying to get an escape. 3A, 152 pounds, Bo Burnham. We're nearing the end of period number two. Burnham is on top, and he's holding Fulton, hopes to hold him at least, for a few seconds to end this second period. And uh, then they would get going in the third period. But that is the end of period number two. And the score, 4-0. Burnham leading Fulton. On the 4A uh, team standings, it looks to me like uh, right now Green River has the lead with 226. Campbell County is second with 147. Natrona is third with 138.5. And Sheridan is fourth with uh, 134 and a half. Guy Grant of Lovell on the 2A mat has picked up a couple of points, but he is still trailing Bill Stutzer of Grable, 7-2. to two. We're now just starting the third period of play. It's a good day in Mountain West basketball for the Wyoming Cowboys as they defeated uh, BYU today, 85-70, to 70, I think was the final score. Utah lost to Colorado State in Six, Fort Collins now to 49, Monday night. Yeah. It's going to be Utah at Wyoming, and that's the big Monday game. I Utah. bet some kids will miss class on Tuesday morning, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, Utah plays every big Monday. Yeah, it seems like it. Is that one on TV? Yeah. yeah. It is. On the foray here, we've got a minute 27 left uh, in the second period. Still 3-2 to two with Salas leading to Foya. Well, there's not much mystery as to the uh, champion in Class 4A, of course, and we knew that uh, last night, the way Green River went at it. They were highly favored, and they certainly lived up to advance notices, but uh, it, we thought there might be something a little closer in 2A. Lusk has uh, done quite well, and now an escape on the 3A mat by Fulton from Powell, so it's a 4-1 to one match right now as Burnham tries to get him down again. And he's making some progress, but maybe not. 
It's interesting to note, George, in that uh, 4A, that at the moment anyway, uh, Green River has only one state champion, but Campbell County is, has three. So they've won all three of their matches. Uh, Green River may pick up another one here, but it's a tight match right now. Lovell going into, uh, was starting the day in second place in class 2A, had just two guys in the finals, and here's one of them right now, and Guy Grant, 160 pounds, and he's trailing Bill Stutzer now, 7-3. to three. We have uh, 36 seconds to go in the match. Stutzer really, uh, in the end of the first period, with uh, two three-point near falls for the margin here right now, now it's 7-4, to four, so it's a little bit closer with a half a minute to go. We're down to our final half minute of the 3A 152-pound championship match. 36 seconds to be exact. Bo Burnham with a 4-1 to lead over Nick Fulton. And they have really battled it out. Most of these uh, championship matches in 3A, we haven't had a pin. They've all been very close. Very close. And, of course, the team scores reflect that. They're very close. Down here in 4A, George, we've come to the last period of... 160 pounds. Salas from Green River is ahead. Chooses to take the bottom position to begin the third period. Tries a quick stand up, doesn't get there. Tafoya co controls him. Uh, this one looks like it's gonna be tight all the way up. Tafoya does stand up and escape. Takes the lead four to two. And it looks like a contact or something is out for Tafoya. Well, you see on the 3A mat, Bo Burnham has defeated Nick Fulton by a score of 6-1. to one. Now, let me add up that score. That would give Douglas 179 and a half. They are three points behind Worland and Powell. And on, getting close. And on 2A, Bill Stutzer of Grable repeats as state champion, a 7-4 winner over Guy Grant of Lovell. Stutzer win this year at 160 pounds. Last year he won at 152. We're uh, still rolling around out here at 160 between Salas and Tafoya. Tafoya is on top, or excuse me, Salas is on top with a 6-2 lead with a minute 15 left in the match. Over to 2A, and we're moving up to 171 pounds. Josh Peterson of Wright High School against Cade Katuria of Lovell. Katuria, a uh, defending champion at 171 pounds. He's a senior in the blue singlet. Peterson took third last year at 171, a 43 and 4 record so far. On the 3A mat, we have the 160-pound match between Jeremy Duncan from Buffalo and Zach Zawaki from Powell. Zach Zawaki is the coach's son. Steve is the head coach at Powell, and they started the evening in first place. They are now tied with Worland for first place, and there is Duncan trying to get the takedown, and he is he gets the takedown against Zawaki. Now, Buffalo is in a black singlet as well, but you see Buffalo in yellow right across the uh, the chest. Zawaki in the pretty much basic black singlet that Powell wears. Duncan has the two-point lead as he gets the takedown in the first period of the match. On 4A, Matt, down here, we've got eight seconds left in the 160-pound match with Salas dominating Tafoya, uh, six to two at this point. Eight seconds left. Uh, Tafoya's down on the bottom and has eight seconds to score a whole bunch of points. On the two-way, Matt K. Katuria of Lovell, a takedown and a two-point near fall over Josh Peterson of Wright. So Katuria, with 30 seconds to go in this first period, leads four to nothing. In 3A, Jeremy Duncan has the lead over Zach Zawaki in the first uh, period. He got the initial takedown. Zawaki is 28 and three on the season. And he is on his back right now. Duncan had him on his back and I think he'll get some back points here. Yes, he will. He gets three, so it's five to one. And then the escape by Zawaki. Zawaki 28 and three. Duncan had a great season, 37 and three. Uh, they've wrestled once before. Zawaki won it. 
on two AK Katuria of Lovell leading Josh Peterson of right four nothing after one period. Katuria, who won state last year at 171, pinned all three of his opponents to get to the championship round. He's 28 and five. Peterson had two pins on his way to the championship, both under a minute. On 4A again, Salas from Green River is the 160-pound champion. That ring runs Green River's team score to 230 points. At 171, we've just started that match for the championship. We have Jeremy Pollock of Cody, who's 35 and 4 on the year and a senior. Ryan Brown from Cheyenne Central, who's 27 and 5 on the year and has lost one match to Pollock from Cody this year. Pollock is a returning state champion at 160 pounds. Last year, Brown was third in state. On the 3A mat now, Jeremy Duncan Buffalo Sr. has uh, taken the lead 9-1 to one over Zach Zawaki of Powell in the 160-pound match. That is uh, Zawaki on top here as we start the second period. Duncan trying to get out from under. On 2A, 1-12 to go in the second period. 8-0 now. Kay Katuria looking to repeat a state champion from Lovell High School over Josh Peterson from Wright. Katuria in the blue singlet pretty much has controlled this match really from the get-go. Uh, at the 4A mat, uh, Brown from Cheyenne Central scored a quick takedown on Pollock of Cody. Cody came right back with an escape. About 35 seconds left in the first period, and uh, Brown has the lead 2-1. to one. Brown is in the dark black singlet, and Pollock from Cody is in the blue and gold. In fourth place, Hewitt. We continue on here at the State High School Wrestling Championships, and we're going strong. Perhaps, uh, well, let's stay with it. I don't think this is a good place to take a break, although we're going to have to pretty soon. We want to stay with it because the action is continuing, and Jeremy Duncan, who has really been aggressive, has Zawaki on his back again, or nearly on his back. He may get some more points. And over on 2A, you saw us flash the team scores with Lusk having 242. They're going to win this thing easily. Lovell still running second. Lingle still running third. Hewler running fourth. Kateria of Lovell winning this match 8 to nothing over Peterson of Wright. And see that uh, Kateria just really working on the arm and the head of Peterson, just driving it into the mat. 4A, no change in score here in the 171-pound match. There's a point for Pollock of... Uh, Cody and so now it's tied up two to two and there's uh, about 12 seconds gone in the second period. Black is in on a leg, can't score a takedown and they're still on their feet. The 3A championship at 160 pounds. Jeremy Duncan is up to his lead. He's leading 11 to 1 over Zach Zawaki. Now Powell started the night with a, a three-point lead over Worland, or four points it was. But uh, Powell, with five wrestlers, has not won a championship match yet, and that has hurt them. Worland has won one, and that enabled them to tie Powell. So they're tied at 182 and a half. Uh, Douglas is three points back, and then it's uh, Newcastle. They're not far behind. They're just three points behind Douglas. That's incredible, isn't it? Isn't it <laughs> Over on 2A, 125 to go. It's 11-0 now. Kay Couturia of Lovell over Josh Peterson of Wright. Couturia, a state champion at this weight a year ago. Okay, on 4A, we're back <coughs> with uh, 52 seconds left in the second period at 171 pounds. Um, and Pollock from Cody has the lead at the present time, 4-2, to two, and is in the top position and is cautioned for starting too soon by the official. They'll start in the referee's position again with Brown on the bottom. 3A, you see Duncan. He's underneath here. Zawaki's on top, but Duncan can afford to kind of coast a little bit. He's up 11 to 1. Zawaki trying to work some kind of a pinning hold because that's the only way he's going to win this thing, I think. And now an escape. It's 12 to 1. Duncan gets an escape. Zawaki trying for the takedown. And on 2A, 
Katuria adding more points. That's a three-point near fall. He's going to get a major dis uh, technical fall decision, leading 14 to nothing here with 14 seconds to go. So a win by Lovell here will probably solidify their place in second in Class 2A. L uh, Lusk running away with this with 242 pounds. Uh, two points, excuse me. You can see the effort on the 3A match. This is Zawaki on top, trying his darndest to get Duncan to his back. And it's tough because Duncan's a fine wrestler, and he is able to with, withhold that. It's a 12-4 score right now. Duncan has the lead with 20 seconds to go. 4-8. Um, Pollock still has the lead, 4-3. Brown was given a penalty point uh, because uh, Pollock had taken an elbow against the joint there. So it now stands 4-3 to three with 23 seconds left in the second period. The Buffalo wrestler has won the 160-pound state championship in Class 3A. Jeremy Duncan with a 12-7 win over Zach Zawaki from Powell. So Powell does not pick up any team points in that match. And the champion is Jeremy Duncan. Buffalo. Brown has tied it up over here on the 4A mat with an escape with five seconds left in the uh, second period. He's giving the returning state champ all he wants here with the four to four score as the time runs out at the end of the second period. On 2A, 189 pounds in the red singlet, Jason Herter from Lusk. He is a junior against John Carey of Hewlett. He is in the black a singlet, a senior. Carrier finished fourth at 171 pounds last year. Herter finished second at 189 last year and has a 35 and three record. We could well see a new leader now in the Class 3A team race because Worland could go on top here. They have Gabe Harry wrestling at 171 pounds. He is in the uh, black singlet with the white on the side, and he is going against Tony Lason for Mountain View. Now Harry is unbeaten, 23-0, 63 consecutive high school wins. So he would be favored here, I think. Wow. He is 2 and nothing against Lason, and a win by uh, Harry would give uh, Worland the team lead. He's one of the top-ranked high school wrestlers at that weight class also in the nation. Harry is. He oh. is a good one. He had some uh, some knee problems. I remember, I think he first time back was the Douglas tournament. He was a little tentative there, but he came on and, and won the championship, and he is one tough wrestler. Over on the 2A mat, Jason Herter of Lusk with a takedown here early in this first period, leading John Carrier of Hewlett, two to nothing, 189 pound final in class 2A. For a mat, uh, Brown has now taken a 5-4 lead over Pollock and is in pretty deep on a leg, trying to score takedown with 50 seconds left in the match. Oh, that's going down to the wire too, isn't it? <laughs> We've had some great ones. The, the only uh, one-sided match really in 3A was the last one Jeremy Duncan won. And it ended up where it was a little closer than it ended up 12-5. Both of these guys on 4A are pretty tired right now. They've been going at it hard, although not scoring too many points. It's coming down to the last 30 seconds. See if some, one of them can score a takedown or if uh, Brown can just f uh, hold Pollock off to get a real upset here. And there is a point given to Pollock. Uh, the referee uh, said that Brown had walked off or backed off the mat. So now it's tied 5-5. Pollock is in behind and takes Brown to the mat with 11 seconds left for a two-point takedown. Has a 7-5 lead, and it looks like it's gonna stay that way. So Pollock will collect his second state championship in high school wrestling in Wyoming. Pollock of Cody is the champion over Brown of Central, 7-5. Over on 2A, we're in the second period, 189 pounds. Jason Herter of Lusk 
maintaining a 2-0 lead over John Carrier of Hewlett. Herter in the red singlet. Uh, Carrier of Hewlett in the black singlet. And Herter coming into the final. He had three pins. First round, first round, quarterfinal round, semifinal round. Gabe Harry has taken the lead over Tony Layson in the 171-pound 3A match. He got the takedown, did Gabe Harry from Worland, and then he got a near fall, so he leads it 5-0 late in the first period. And I repeat, a win by Gabe Harry would put Worland in first place. I was going to say, George, 63 wins in a row at the high school level. That's, That's pretty amazing. amazing. 4A, what's going on, Jerry? 4A, we're at 189 pounds with Bruce Applegate of Cody, a senior, and Brian Dye of Kelly Walsh, a senior. Dye is 30-1 and one on the year. I believe that his only match did come uh, against Applegate. They are uh, tied 1-1 this year. I think overall in their career, Applegate le leads at about 4-2 to in, in matches. Those two have gone round and round, haven't they? Yes, they have. They're, this is going to be one of the best matches in the 4A tournament, I believe. Applegate makes a throw on the edge of the mat and gets two points on the takedown. A reminder that uh, one week from tonight we'll be broadcasting the 1A and 2A state championship games. We're not going to just do two of the games. We're going to do all four of them. The 1A girls and boys champion and the 2A girls and boys championship. We'll be on the air a week from today at 3.30 in the afternoon. So you want to in for, tune in for state high school championship basketball here on K2 Television. And in two weeks we'll have the 3A, 4A tournament and we'll have all four games there too. Do Lots I get to come basketball. in and commentate on the basketball? We know that just a little bit better than wrestling, I think. <laughs> Not by much. No. No, we well, don't know much there either, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> 189 pounds in 2A. Uh, We're going into the third period now. Jason Herter picked up a couple of more points. He's from Lusk over John Carrier of Hewlett. Lusk is going to be the runaway winner in Class 2A. They won 2A a year ago by 27 and a half points. On the 3A mat, that's Gabe Harry on top. He has the blonde, blonde uh, colf, I guess. And uh, he is leading Tony Layson from Mountain View by a 5-0 score. Layson trying to get the escape, and he does. So it's 5-1. Layson battling back. He's a senior, as is Gabe Harry. Layson's record, though, 36-3, which isn't bad by any means, but... Gabe Harry, 23-0 on the season. Over on 4A, we've got 15 seconds left in the first period, and Dye scored an escape, so it's now 2-1, to one, and uh, has almost has a cr side cradle tied up on Applegate, but can't score out of it. Looks like it's going to end the first period with a 2-1 to one score in favor of Applegate. Uh, at the 180 pound mat, 89 pound match. Kelly Walsh is in the green and Applegate from Cody is in the dark blue uniform. Under a minute to go in the two-way 180 pound match. It is now 7-0 now. Jason Herter of Lusk over John Carrier of Hewlett. Herter really has just made no mistakes whatsoever and has not allowed Carrier to do much. He's been dominant, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Well, so has uh, Gabe Harry over on the 3A mat at 171 pounds. We're in the second period now with just 10 seconds to go. And he has a 5-1 to one lead over Tony Layson. And a win by Harry would put Worland in first place in the 3A team standings. They're tied with Powell right now. And over Douglas is only three points behind. Over here at 4A... Die just scored a big three points. Applegate locked his hands in the top position, and that's illegal, so he lost a point there. And Die then scored a reversal, so he came up with a three-point er, move out of it. And he is now on top of Applegate, four to two, and on top of him on the wrestling match also. And on 2A, Jason Herder, who finished second, and 189 pounds a year ago for Niobrara County High School. Goes to the finals again, wins this year. 
seven to two over John Carrier. So Lusk has 248 points so and far in Class 2A. They, they're rolling it up pretty good there. They won it last year, but not that uh, decisively. Well, you've got a good one over there, Jerry, don't you? 4A, they're going hard at it. 189 pounders. It's four to three. Applegate got an escape. Dies in on a single leg, trying to pick it up. We've got a minute 15 left in the second period. Applegate Wizards pretty tough in there. Die comes back up with a chin lock. Tries to pull him down to the mat. And moves to the side. And gets a two point takedown to take a six to three lead. Over on 2A in the silver is Greg Glott from Upton High School at 215 pounds. He is a two-time state champion at 189. He's going for his third state title. He's taking on Jason Marchand of Rocky Mountain. Now Kyle Kilgore of Rollins failed in his bid to win four state championships. Here's Glott going for three. I tell you, it's, it's tough to win four in a row. It's tough to win three in a row, of course. And on the 3A mat now, Gabe Harry is leading by a six to one score. But Tony Lyson is doing everything he can to, to get back in it. There's only 38 seconds left. And Gabe Harry with the five-point lead. 4A, uh, Die is starting to dominate Applegate a little bit now. Has a cradle on him, turning him toward his back. It's going to score at least three points here. Has it pretty tight. And there's the fall call for Die. Die ends up this year with a 31 and one mark. State champion at 189 pounds from Kelly Walsh High School over Bruce Applegate of Cody. So two wins for the Die brothers in class 4A. And They're right an here, impressive young man. And in 2A right now, great clock from Upton. Already with a two-point takedown, a two-point near fall in the first period over Jason Marchman. Four-nothing early, a lot of Upton leading. And now the Whirlin' Warriors have moved into first place in Class 3A. Gabe Harry, a winner by a 6-1 to one score in his match over Tony Lason from Mountain View. That gives four points to Whirlin'. They go up 186 and a half. Powell is next, 182 and a half. Then Douglas, 179 and a half. Newcastle, 176 and a half. Whew. On the 4A mat, we've started the 215 pound match with Wes Busha of Green River, a senior, 32 and four on the year against David Bennett of Evanston, a senior with a record of 26 and 10 on the year. They have uh, wrestled three times and Busha has won all three of them. Busha is a returning state champion at 215 pounds and uh, could be possibly the third state champion for Green River in the tournament. 215 pounds, 148 to go in the second period. Greg Lott, a senior from Upton High School, leading 6-0 over Jason Martin of Rocky Mountain. Boy, has Glott had a great year. He's 34-0. Man. Now we're at the 189-pound match on the Class 3A mat. That's Trent Kirchhofer from Douglas. He is a junior, and he is up against Adam Clifford from Lyman. You can tell the Douglas singlet there, the red, white, and blue, and Lyman is in, uh, well, it's a blue singlet. They're scoreless in the first period. 4A, we've got Busha with a quick takedown. And uh, Bennett turned right around, got an escape, so it's two to one in the 215 pound match with Busha in the Green River green uniform. And uh, Bennett, the only representative of Evanston in the championship round in the red. Greg Lott of Upton in class 2A, 215, with another two point takedown over Jason Marchant of Rocky Mountain is now eight nothing. With 40 seconds to go in the second period, Glott at 34-0. He is in the silver singlet here on Matt 2A in the lower right-hand corner. Kirchhofer's kind of an interesting story. It's scoreless on the 3A mat uh, between he and Clifford. Kirchhofer wrestled at 171 most of this season. Then he went up to 189. Uh, to try to help his team, and he certainly has helped his team a lot. So he's outweighed a little bit against Clifford, but so far it's scoreless. 
4A, we're starting the second period with uh, Busha in, uh, with a 4-1 to one lead, and he'll start the second period on the bottom. Evanston, the Evanston wrestler Bennett, starts with an Olympic-style start and lets uh, Busha out. He wants to wrestle on his feet. Well, when we have a moment here, let's pause for just brief moment from the state uh, wrestling championship. We'll be back in a moment on Wyoming's K2 Television. Uh oh, Bush of Green River is a state champion for the second year in a row at 215 pounds over Bennett of Evanston. Wins it by a fall in the second period. And on 2A, Greg Lott of Upton has won his third state championship, a 15 to nothing win over Jason Marks in the Rocky Mountain. The senior wins 215 pounds. As a junior, he won at 189. At a sophomore, he won at 189. Three state championships for that guy in the silver, Greg Lott from Upton. Well, we're on the 3A, 189-pound mat. Trench Kirchhofer from Douglas was hurt a little bit. He walked it off, and he is uh, in the red, white, and blue singlet against uh, Adam Clifford from Lyman. Kirchhofer is on top here as he tries to break uh, Lyman down. We're in the final minute of the second period, and there is no score between these two wrestlers at 189 pounds. Kirchhofer trying to work something here to see if he can get on the board against uh, Clifford. And now Clifford gets an escape, so the Lyman wrestler moves ahead. 1-0 in the final half minute of the second period. On the 4A mat, we're uh, down to the last match at uh, 275 pounds, the heavyweights. We have John Hawes from Natrona County High School, senior with the 29 and five record. Uh, and Wilson Gilmore from Green River. A, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what year in school he is. He didn't mark it off. He has a 23 and 13 record. These two gentlemen have not wrestled each other this year. Hawes makes a quick takedown on Gilmore, has him on his back. And it could be over pretty quickly in the 4A heavyweight match. There he is, John Hawes. Wow. Wins it by a fall. That was pretty in, fast. That was well, uh, a minute and, and 21 seconds in the first period. John Hawes over Wes Gilmore from Green River at 275. On 2A, Dusty Sterkel in the red over of Lingo against Derek Olinger of Warcroft. Sterkel, a senior, has got him right where he wants, and that's the pin. You can see that again on 4A. Uh, on 3A, Kirchhofer has taken a 2-1 to one lead starting the third period against Clifford, but you'll see that, uh, that uh, moment for uh, Haas on, on uh, 4A, and we're going to see the pin on 2A. Man. So we are done on Matt for 2A. The Lust Tigers will repeat as state champions, falling away, but Dusty Sturkel finishes the day from Linga with a pin over Derek Olinger of Moorcroft. So Linga will finish in the top three, and maybe with this pin here, they might jump over Lovell for, for second place. We haven't had any pins on the 3A, Matt. Right now, Kirchhofer leads 2-1 to one over Clifford. If Kirchhofer can hang on and give Douglas a win here, they will move... I believe they'll move into second place. I'll add it all up in a minute. Kirchhofer is down here. We're in the third period. He's leading, though, two to one over Adam Clifford. Well, it looks like in 4A uh, that uh, after that wonderful performance by the Green River team, the Wolves from Green River, I think they ended up with some 236 points. And then in second place, according to my calculations, it'll be Gillette from Campbell County with 147, third Natrona with 144.5, and fourth 
Sheridan with 134.5, but I'm not positive. That's just Well, we've gone now. full sc uh, screen on the 3A mat since that's the only mat where anything's happening now. 3A, Kirchhofer with a 2-1 to one lead over Clifford at 189 pounds, and we only have... Uh, about 34 seconds to uh, wrestle here in this match. And still two more trying after, to get loose. And two more after that. That's right. We, we do it right on 3A. Very yeah. careful because uh, it's been such a tough team race, and it still isn't decided. Yeah. Kirchhofer trying to get loose here against Clifford, and he's unable to, so it's still 2-1. to one. Remember, George, last year it came down to a pin on the very last match That's right. by Douglas to win the state championship. It could happen again this year. I, I think that you really do see something that, that makes wrestling a real team sport here. I, I felt that uh, in the 4A uh, classification that since Green River had run away with it, the individual matches were not nearly so intense. And when that team pressure is there, the yeah. individual matches get intense and there's better wrestling and a lot more excitement. Kirchhofer trying his best here to get uh, Clifford to his back. And it's over. Trent Kirchhofer from Douglas, a two to one win over Adam Clifford. And let's add that in. Let's see what that does uh, to Douglas. That makes them 183 and a half. They're tied with Powell for second place. Worland leads the 3A, 186 and a half. And we're gonna go down to the final two matches here. Okay. And it's a Worland versus Douglas at 215. And this will be a good one. Rody, Justin Rody from Worland and Casey Haldeman from Douglas. They've wrestled three times. Rody has won two of the three. So we go down to the final here in the that's a 215 pound class and I guess you know that uh, Douglas is in the red white and blue singlet and the Whirlin wrestler Justin Rohde is in the black singlet Rohde is a senior as is Haldeman Haldeman was a good football player for the Douglas football team in fact he was a super 25 kid it's only his second year of uh, high school wrestling. He was in on a nice high crotch there, George, but uh, Alderman countered it pretty well. No score, first period. If the Whirlwind wrestler wins that, that was out of bounds. Looked like Haldeman went for the head, didn't he? Head, head and arm throw there. Nobody got anything. It was out of bounds. George, let me just throw in these Lusk final numbers. Yeah. Uh, for 2A, Lusk wins the championship with 262. Lover will take section, second with 168. Lingo third with 155. Hewlett takes fourth with 139 and a half. And Rocky Mountain takes fifth with 105. Well, if Worland wins this match, they will have won the... Uh, and there's a takedown for Rohde as uh, Haldeman went for the head and yeah, didn't get it. Tried to make a head and arm throw and didn't get it, and uh, Rohde just slipped around behind. Now Haldeman trying to get loose here to get an escape. He uh -oh. snaps. He snapped back there. He's in trouble. He might get himself in real trouble here yep. as Rohde has him in trouble on his back. A win by uh, Worland would wrap up the team championship for them. Remember, and he gets Haldeman two more if he wins to, by a fall. Yeah. Trying to fight him off. And boy, this is 20 seconds yet to... And there it is. A pin by Justin Rohde over Casey Haldeman. And that will give Worland the team championship because they get six points. And that will give them 192 and a half and we'll see it again the pin by Justin Rohde and it probably came because Haldeman was a little too aggressive wasn't he, he got himself in trouble